In John Locke's essay concerning human understanding, one of the things that should be understood first is that John Locke accepts the hyperbolic doubt of Rene Descartes. Descartes doubted sense experience based on his dream experiment and John Locke accepts this reality. John Locke accepts this starting point, but he doesn't necessarily say it. It is not explicit that John Locke accepts the hyperbolic doubt of Descartes. In fact, in many of the modern philosophers, they will accept Rene Descartes' hyperbolic doubt, but they will not tell you explicitly. Based on the hyperbolic doubt of Descartes as a starting point, John Locke assumes that what we know as objects of knowledge are not things but our own ideas. So the main problem that Locke looks to solve is the origin of our ideas. So the essay is about John Locke trying to find the origin of our ideas that we know. This is in contrast to the philosophy of Aristotle. For Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas, the idea is that by which you know physical objects. But John Locke, like Rene Descartes, does not accept this. He does not think that we know physical objects first. So by default, John Locke assumes that it is our ideas that we know first. John Locke is an empiricist. The empiricists claim that knowledge begins with sense experience and primary knowledge is gathered by sense experience. But we see that if we have a starting point of hyperbolic doubt and we doubt our sense experience, how can this be so? Nevertheless, this is what John Locke claims, that the mind is like a blank piece of paper. And how does it come to be furnished? By experience, he says. He has ideas in his mind and he is seeking, he is searching to find out where they come from. For John Locke, an idea is an image, a sensation, a thought, a memory. The word idea represents all of those different mental events. All ideas, according to Locke, come from experience. And from experience, there are two main sources. The first one is sensation. The second one is reflection. In sensation, the mind is completely passive. This is our initial experience of the world. Reflection involves the internal operations of our mind. From these two sources, John Locke says we have two different kinds of ideas. The first one is simple ideas. Simple ideas are like the color on a flower or the smell of a flower or the texture of a flower. Simple ideas are uniform. They are not composed of different parts. They are simple. The next type of idea are complex ideas. Complex ideas are a compilation of simple ideas. Now concerning simple ideas, there are qualities that these ideas have. There are primary qualities and then there are secondary qualities. Primary qualities are properties of an object that reside in the object itself. Secondary qualities are properties of an object that depend on the spectator. They depend on the one who's observing the object. Secondary qualities are not in the object itself. An example of a secondary quality would be color, would be smell, or would even be hardness or softness. An example of a primary quality would be extension. It would be the figure, the motion, or even the number. The primary qualities reside in the object itself. So we can say, that there is more reality concerning primary qualities. Secondary qualities are not, remember, 
in the object themselves. So John Locke describes them as these powers to produce in the person who is looking at the object these types of sensations. So when you are experiencing the sensation of some type of color on a flower, it is by means of the primary qualities because the color of the flower is not necessarily in the object itself, but the primary qualities are. So the figure and the extension of the flower, extension is just how much space an object is taking up. So the extension and the figure of the flower are the primary qualities. When simple ideas are combined, they form complex ideas. The mind has the power to combine simple ideas into complex ideas. An example of a complex idea would be a human being. There are many different ideas in a human being. You have the skin color, you have hair color, you have the shape of a human being, you have extension. These are all qualities of a human being. There is a collection of simple ideas. Now, some of these simple ideas are secondary qualities, and some of these simple ideas are simple ideas of primary qualities. So a human being, what you know as a human being, is composed of all of these. Concerning the idea of substance, John Locke says that substances are complex ideas. This idea of substance goes back to Aristotle. Aristotle said that there are individually existing substances in the world. This is one of his starting points in his metaphysics. In other words, it is one of the starting points in his study about reality. There are individually existing things in the world that he called substances. John Locke is using this idea of substance, but he is saying something very different than what Aristotle said. He says that the idea of substances is a complex idea. If it is a complex idea, then what are the simple ideas that this complex idea is composed of? It gets kind of confusing when you think about it. When you think about the idea of substance, what would be the primary qualities? What would be the secondary qualities? This is why John Locke concludes that the idea of substance is very confusing. It's a confused idea of substance that we have. John Locke also says there must be a substance because there has to be an underlying basis for the primary and the secondary qualities. After all, the word substance comes from a Latin word. Sub means under, and stance, just like in English, it means somebody standing or something standing. So a substance is something that is standing underneath. So John Locke does not want to lose the idea that there is a substance. He just says it's a very confused thing. And he just assumes that it exists because we need some underlying basis for the primary and the secondary qualities. But remember, which of those are really in the thing? Only the primary qualities. And the substance itself, well, we assume that it's there but it's a very confused idea. And the way that this philosophy is being explained by John Locke, it is very confusing. This is why you have to keep in mind what Aristotle meant by substance. Aristotle said a substance, a primary substance, is an individually existing thing. So if we're going to start talking metaphysics, if we are going to start talking philosophy, that is, we want to be able to talk about the things that we experience in a very general way. So we just call those things substances. So Aristotle said, we see many substances in the world. This is one of his starting points in his philosophy. What is a substance? A substance is an individually existing thing. And that is the reality. 
we do see a lot of individually existing things in the world. That's what we begin with. My coffee cup is an individually existing thing. It is a substance. This microphone in front of my face, it's a substance. It's an individually existing thing. I'm a primary substance. I'm an individually existing thing. But for John Locke, the use of substance in this way, he says, is a very confusing thing. We just have to assume that substance itself exists because what is really known for John Locke are the ideas in his mind, the simple ideas and the complex ideas. But not all ideas are equal. Those ideas of primary qualities, those are more real and more known for John Locke because he says those primary qualities actually exist in the object whatever that object is because remember john locke has a very confused idea of what the object itself is why does he have a very confused idea because he can't trust his senses even though john locke is an empiricist and the modern empiricists say that they begin with sense experience that knowledge begins with sense experience the contradiction that is obvious is that they don't trust their sense experience because of the hyperbolic doubt of Descartes that he has accepted. So this can be a very confusing point if somebody is trying to understand the philosophy of John Locke because he has the label of being an empiricist, but based on his philosophy, he is claiming that what he knows first is the idea in his mind, just like Rene Descartes. In contrast to Aristotle, Aristotle claims it is the sense object, that thing outside your mind, that primary substance, the coffee cup, that is the thing that you know first. That is the main difference between Aristotle and John Locke and between Aristotle and Rene Descartes. Later philosophers are going to capitalize on the assumptions of John Locke. John Locke assumes that there are substances or that substance is real. And later philosophers like George Berkeley and David Hume, they will not make that assumption. 